this two series Grand Coupe model, BMW belatedly joins the market for compact four door coupes that previously Mercedes had almost to itself with their CLA. It shares nearly all its engineering with the one series hatch, which means it's primarily front driven, but it's very much more aspirational. According to BMW, this 2 Series Grand Coupe will appeal to emotional extrovert people looking for an alternative to the traditional saloon. Or if you want us to read between the lines for you, people who ordinarily wouldn't necessarily prioritise the purchase of a BMW, but might well like this one. It is perhaps with these people in mind that the Munich maker decided to base this car on the primarily front-driven FAAR platform it uses for its little one series hatch, rather than the rear-driven chassis developed for the two-door second generation two series coupe, which at the time of this test was in the final stages of development. The target market here, BMW reasons, will have little or no interest in which end this car is driven from, and the one series platform is cheaper to make and easier to package. But does it make this car dull to drive? Well, that depends on your expectations. Inevitably, it's not as engaging as a rear-driven two-series coupe. There's nothing quite like the appealing feel of being pushed through a bend rather than being pulled through it. And if this car had that, it'd enjoy a significant unique selling point over its Mercedes CLA arch rival. It still manages to shade that car dynamically though, thanks to precise, accurate steering and an agile willingness to change direction, which can deliver quick point-to-point -point driving times over twisty roads. That's helped by an engineering balance that gets within a fraction of achieving perfect 50-50 front to rear weight distribution, which is why the car feels so composed at speed through tight turns. In short, there's still enough here to please someone who likes their driving. Engine-wise, there's the usual lineup of units that BMW uses with its compact front-driven models, which means a 1.5-litre three-cylinder petrol unit for the derivative at the foot of the range, the 140-horsepower 218i model. This can be had with optional seven-speed dual-clutch auto transmission on request and is decently efficient when it comes to WLTP-rated stats, managing a combined cycle reading of up to 49.6 miles to the gallon and a CO2 return of up to 130 grams per kilometer. Further up the lineup lie three two-litre models, the popular 150 horsepower 218D diesel, which can be had in manual or eight-speed auto forms, and the two top variants, the 190 horsepower 220D diesel we're trying here, and the 306 horsepower M235i petrol performance model, which is only offered with the eight-speed auto and gets BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system, along with the Torsen limited slip differential. You'll buy this car because of the way it looks, no question. Like most four-door coupes, this one is distinguished by frameless side windows and a swept back silhouette, which makes the car look a fraction more compact than it actually is. And it offers plenty of overtaking presence. The large corner air intakes below the fog lamps hint at performance potential, while these slightly angled full LED headlights draw attention to the familiar BMW kidney grille, which extends almost the full width between those lights and features bars contoured with eye-catching vertical indentation. The rear isn't perhaps quite as eye-catching, but the full LED L-shaped tail lamps, another classic BMW design cue, have distinctive nighttime illumination. Is this a proper coupe? This frameless door certainly makes it feel like one. But the slightly lower slung driving position that genre might lead you to expect doesn't really materialise once inside. Instead, cabin architecture from the 1 Series hatch has been carried over virtually unaltered. Still, that's not necessarily an issue because it's very nice indeed. No, it doesn't have the space-age feel of a Mercedes CLA with all its twinkling lights and screens or the knurled, classy coolness of a sporty Audi A3 saloon. But as a quality compromise between these two approaches, the cabin here takes some beating. Soft-touch surfaces and the solid feel of all the fixtures and fittings is matched on plusher models 
caused by things like contrast stitching and uh, these intricate extended lighting door panel strips. There's plenty of luxury segment technology too, particularly if you pay more for the live cockpit professional package that we have here, which matches a 10.25 inch virtual instrument binnacle screen with a classy center dash iDrive monitor of the same size. There's some clever stuff incorporated into this extra cost setup, including what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant, which is there to answer questions you can voice to the car as you drive it. Even the lesser Live Cockpit Plus media package gives you quite a lot, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Bear in mind that many of the various connected drive digital services are life limited before becoming chargeable. As usual with a coupe, rearward vision is somewhat compromised by the sloping roof and angled rear screen, so you'll need the standard parking sensors. But finding the ideal driving position is easy. The seats are very comfortable and there's plenty of interior storage space. Time to take a seat in the back. The headroom figure is 817 millimetres. That's 40 millimetres less than you get in a 1 Series, but 10 millimetres more than in a rival Mercedes CLA. The scalloped seat backs create a bit of extra space for your knees, and as for legroom, well, there's 617 millimetres of it, which is the same as a CLA, but here you get a bit more space to tuck your feet beneath the seat ahead. Let's take a look out back. Inside the trunk, you're provided with a reasonable 430 litres of cargo capacity. That's 50 litres more than a 1 Series hatch, but 30 litres less than that Mercedes CLA rival. Long items like skis through between a couple of rear-seated folk. So, how to summarise? Well, if you were already thinking of buying the 1 Series hatch, we'd encourage you to also consider this Grand Coupe because it's essentially the same car without much of a practicality downside and a considerably more stylish feel. Now, that in a nutshell sums up what this kind of car is all about. Late to this party, BMW may be, but the brand has come ready to make an impact.